Okay, so welcome back. This tutorial is kind of an important one, specifically if you want to save hours off your life uh, when creating a Shopify store using your Desly. Now, what often happens is you get stuck in this process of you want to make a small change and then you have to keep mm, exporting, updating, updating the whole theme, waiting for that to happen, then re-editing and re-authoring, and it's a bit of a pain in the backside if I'm being honest. So this particular process will cut all that time out. It means you can make incremental changes to your themes pretty straightforward. You do need to understand how the theme's built and what the structure is, and I'm going to go over it in this tutorial, so hang around and, uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so if you've seen some of my previous tutorials, you would have seen that I've been working on this, and no, it's not one of my designs. It is basically just one of the e-commerce template stores that you can get Webflow kind of starter store thingy, my bobs. So if you want to follow along, do that. And basically, this is a Shopify theme that's already on the store. And what we're going to be doing in this particular session is just adding some new bits. We're going to add a new section and a new snippet. And then also go through the how to get interactions to work, because that's a bit of an issue when you're using this particular process. And I'll show you how to do that pretty easily. And then also just things like updating your assets and whatnot. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so open to Webflow and we're going to create a new announcement area and then, I don't know, some other snippet of text somewhere so I can show you what happens when you get a missing translation error, which we'll get into in a little bit. Okay, so what we'll do is create a new section. We want this to be CMS editable, so I'm just going to do some option text, an option text area. And then finally, what we just need to do is just make that into our announcement symbol. Okay, step one, done. Now we're going to add a snippet. So what is a snippet? So a snippet is basically a repeatable piece of code that's being used across a site that doesn't have any CMSable elements. It doesn't have option text, option text images, or option images, or anything on the lines of that. It purely is basically just some HTML or a for loop, like a product loop or something like that, that basically gets reused quite repetitively. All right. So what we'll do is we'll just go control E, we'll do the same thing. Okay. And now all we just to do is create that as a, a symbol. So obviously we haven't done any option text, option whatever. So it's purely just that, but we can call this one missing text example. Okay. Right. So now when we export that, that will become a snippet. All right. So one last thing we'll do just before we go out, we'll just add a little interaction to this particular section for the announcement that when you roll over it changes the background color it's not over complicated Woo, snazzy okay so that's pretty much that so that's pretty that's our section that's our new snippet and we've got an interaction all right so that's that. So just publish that, let it tick through. And what we're going to do now is just export this new improved theme. Isn't it beautiful? And then we're going to start to swap out that code and get this all kind of working on an existing theme. So not loading the whole new theme, just on an existing theme, we're just going to piece by piece replace the bits that we want. And I'll take you that process now. Okay. So export, see you on the other side. Okay. So little error there, but that's just to do with the forms. We'll get into that in another tutorial. So download that. And we have this new theme file. Let's get over to here. So when we start to edit a theme code, it's always advisable to do this on a duplicate theme. Because if this theme is live and you go and start hot swapping content out and an issue happens, you're going to have a bit of an angry client. So all you need to do is basically just go into the, the live theme that is current, just duplicate it. There you go. Uh, you can call it something clever, but I won't. I'm just going to keep it copy. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in and actually have a look at the code to get a little bit of an understanding of the theme architecture and how it kind of comes together because you really need to know this. It's not overly complicated, but you need to know what part goes where because otherwise it's just not going to work. Okay, so what we have here is we have layout which has got, contains this theme.liquid file, which is basically the main header and body um, content of your site. A lot of apps will use this and it will install stuff and code to this automatically. Nine times out of 10, you don't have to adjust or play with that. Okay, then you have templates. Templates are templates. So basically what it is, is it stores all the building blocks that make up how a page is supposed to, to look. So if we look at our 
uh, index, for instance, you will see here you have render section, navigation section, homepage, render newsletter. Now, what is the difference between section and a render? So render is a snippet and a section is a, yeah, you guessed it, a section. So in those, we've got two folders down here. We've got section and snippets. So if you see render, it's looking for static based content that doesn't get edited through the, the Shopify theme customizer. And if it's a section, then that's content that gets edited through the customizer. So if we look at, for instance, sections, we have here our homepage hero, for instance, and you can see down here, there's some JSON, which is the default configuration for the section. And then in the settings underscore data JSON file is where any changes in the Shopify customizer are stored. If it's a snippet, same thing, but it is basically just kind of static code or static something that gets reused repetitively. So, and that's using the render tag, not a section tag. Okay. Um, righty, and then you have another one here, section setting schema. So this is what happens when you want to change something like the color of something through the theme customizer. All right, and then you have assets. So assets is assets. So things like your Webflow.js file, which we'll talk about that in a minute about interactions. You've got your any like icons or images that you use within your theme that aren't editable. And then you also have things like your CSS, which obviously we'll need to update because we made some tweaks. Uh, okay, and then finally what you have here is locales. Now locales, when I said that we're gonna be missing some information, you can see that these little like codes are next to each bit of content. Now, if you don't have this content code here, we're gonna get this missing translation thing. So we're gonna have to add that those codes and that piece of content in there to get that piece to work, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. All right, so let's start swapping this out. So what's first things first is we're gonna add in our new section. So instead of uploading the theme, what we're gonna do is now just open it, open that zip, and you'll see all of those folders are there. So we're gonna start with the section. So we'll go down here and we can see there, it says announcement, okay? So what we need to do is add in our new section. Okay, so importantly, what we need to do when we're doing this is getting the, the names and everything correct. So making everything does work. So even if you can spell, sometimes I can't, but I will just take that, copy that, and I'll plop it in there to create a blank liquid file. All right, so if I click into announcement now, so yeah, so that file should be empty, but I've done this tutorial now twice. So just delete whatever you've got there. You want a blank empty file, nothing in there. And all we're needing to do is just open up that folder that you've got it thingy and just drag and drop it in there. And then ta -da, you have a lovely newly authored liquid file. Hit save. Now, the next thing we want to do is add in our new snippet. So if we go down to here, but now there's quite a lot of snippets here. So it can get a bit um, confusing as to what what you need to do. So what's really quite handy in that particular situation, if you're not sure what file you're looking for, is to do the template first. All right, so we'll go to our index. We can see we haven't edited here, so we'll just get rid of that. And what we'll do is we'll just go to our index file, because we know we're updating the, uh, the index one. Drop it in there, and we can see here we are missing text example. And we know it's a snippet because it says what? Render, aha. All right, so we need, we're looking for missing text example. So again, we can just copy that particular thing. We can add a new snippet, pop it in there, go liquid, done. And now we have that new snippet and we just go and missing text example. And there we go. And now you can see those, those missing translations are those particular codes. So it's just gonna say, it's empty. Okay, so that's that piece done. Now the final stage was making that update to the CSS. And this stuff is super handy because often you'll be developing something and build building and you'll want to just change the margin of something and you feel like, you, for God's sake, I've got to go and edit everything and re-upload a new theme just to change the most minutiae of things. Um, and this is where this really starts to shine and start saving you time. So if we go into the assets, Go into our webflow.css.liquid file, get rid of that, boom. And then we just need to, you guessed it, go to our assets folder and drop that across. Hit save and you're good to go. Now we will preview the store. 
we've got our thing working, but look, the interactions aren't working. And we have our translation missing in blah, blah, blah. So let's first tackle this translation missing, and then we're going to go into the, the interaction side of things. So what we're needing is this particular code. You go into your into the locales file of your downloaded theme. So we go to locales, and then we open this with a code editor like Visual Studio Code. Go into here, control F, paste that code, and we can see here, this will be missing, and so will this. So I just copy those two elements. I'm a bit OCD, so I like to put it in exactly the same location that it would be if I replaced this file. You could put it at the top and it wouldn't really matter. So got it there. Just copy that file there. So we're looking at check out new and popular products. Okay, so just head back over into our theme file. Down into our, lo our locales. I'm going to control F and say check out. Uh, there we go. New and popular products. So into there, pop it in there, save. And then if we refresh, ta-da, it's no longer missing. It's lying. Okay, so now the last bit is to do with our interactions. So interactions are a bit funny because basically Webflow needs to know where every single interaction is and which page it's on in order for it to work. So because this original site was exported without any knowledge of that interaction is not going to work. So if you were using GSAP or something along the lines of that to do the animation, you wouldn't be falling prey to this. But because of the way Webflow interactions work, you have to follow this particular step. Do what we need to do is just update webflow.js file. So go to our code, find webflow.js in the assets folder, which is here. And all we have to do is, you guessed it, just get rid of that and plop in our webflow.js file save and this is where it gets important so if i refresh that page we will see that our interaction is working all right now what can happen sometimes is if you start reusing this module in places you may find that an interaction may start to break or it might not work for whatever reason because you haven't visited the site in a specific order or whatever particular side of things and if that starts to happen what you need to do is go back to Webflow. And this is kind of good practice to do this because it keeps your, keeps your theme and your development environment in sync. Is go into here, let's go into our product page, add that announcement bar, so pop it in there, all right? Now, when I re-export the code, Webflow knows that this particular element has that interaction on it. So that Webflow file will be updated and your interactions will work correctly, okay? so. That's kind of an important step. So if you are putting interactions in multiple different places and you are hot swapping stuff like that, make sure you're updating that webflow.js file. Okay, so that's that. Hopefully you find that useful. It saves me countless hours when I'm trying to troubleshoot stuff or develop it through. So yeah, if you find this stuff useful, uh, like, share and subscribe. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Cheers.